Hi, we're here with the Chrysler 200C and for 2016 these are now available in our region and it enters that furiously fought Camcordima segment where the Camry Accord and the Altima dominate so completely but this has got some tricks up its sleeve as well. So you get three models and you start with an entry level model the 2.4 that costs 89,999 dirhams which is about $24,500. There's a mid-spec also a 2.4 but with better equipment levels obviously that's 100,000 dirhams which is about $27,000 and then there's this one the top spec this is actually a 3.6 liter car which is 120,000 dirhams and $33,000. So this has the V6, the Pentastar unit, which we are familiar with. We have seen them in other Dodge and Chrysler products. This one has a very healthy 295 brake horsepower, 262 pounds for the torque. I estimate that gives it a zero to 100 time, about 6.5 seconds, drives the wheels to a nine speed, nine speed automatic, and a top speed of about 193 kilometers per hour. Pretty economical too. I've been driving it around and actually not used much juice at all. 13.8 liters per 100 kilometers. Very, very sleek and smooth front end. Look at these mirrors. They're beautifully sculptured. Very, very sleek. I'll tell you what, though. I could do with slightly bigger mirrors when I'm actually driving. A nice, simple side here and a very, very low sloping rear roof line, almost coupe-like. Come back here to a very European-esque rear. So I quite like it. Very nicely styled. Handsome car, isn't it? That is a pretty nice badge to have on the back of your camcorder in my segment car, isn't it? Rear camera, of course, and if I press this button here, I can open the boot. It's very wide, very deep, very, very spacious, quite practical. Split folding rear seats and a little window there to put skis through. I don't know, maybe if you're going to ski Dubai. Underneath here, you have a space saver tire, but all in all, very, very practical. So now we're inside the 200C and it's a really nicely appointed cabin. There's a few things I want to show you in this car. It's got one of the most beautiful instrument panels of any car in this segment, a fantastic blue glow, especially at night. And of course, it's got this big digital bit in the middle. And as you can see, I'm just scrolling through that and lots of different information, trip meter, radio messages, and all sorts of stuff in there. Lovely steering wheel, plenty of chrome, plus lots of buttons over here for the trip computer and the phone, over here for the cruise control. And we do actually have active cruise control behind the steering, paddles for the nine speed automatic. It has a big digital display that we're familiar with from other uh, Chrysler and Dodge products. A lot of driver's aids, collision avoidance, lane keeping assist, parking assist, all that sort of stuff. Down here it's got the AC controls and the stereo and the whatnot. Uh, and it has the rotary button for the gear shifter plus an electronic handbrake. One of the coolest things about this car is the amount of storage that it's got. Apart from the regular cubby box, which is quite deep down here, it's got two cup holders, a sort of pen holder, and then you press this button, this whole thing slides up to here, and then further back here, it's got another deep box down here. Inside here, it's got a USB, AUX, 12 volt power supply, and a three point power supply, plus a little window here that goes into a massive tray that's underneath here. Lots of storage room. So I'm joined by Empty Chan in the car and uh, let's take this for a little drive. Let's stick the 9-speed auto into drive. We do have sport mode as well and let's pull out onto this road. I just want to show you what 900, uh, 200, 900, 295 horsepower. It's, That's, it's amazing, isn't it? 295 horsepower. So let's just stop. The road is empty and clear and uh, let's just do an acceleration. So three, two, one. Not bad front wheel drive. Not bad front wheel drive. It's going and we're doing... Not too bad at all. And this is, you know, your family saloon car, right? Right, right. pretty well. Yeah, I think yeah pretty good. Wheels. And very comfortable. I mean, I've been driving this around for a few days now, and the feel-good factor in here is, is, is wonderful. It's always lovely to get into this car and to just look at that instrument panel and play with these controls and drive off. It's a very, very comfortable car from the driver's point of view up here in the front, and very, very easy and comfortable to live with. Very practical as well with this incredible center console. These chrome details really lift the ambiance as well. You see that shiny Chrysler badge and the shiny rim and you think this is such an expensive feeling car you would never get into this car and your mates would never say oh you just bought another sedan no. Nothing in the segment quite has this. No, that's, that's the biggest exactly. Trump card. I, I think you're right. I think that's the biggest uh, Trump card it has, absolutely, because it does have that, like I said, that feel good and that quality aspect about it. And, you know, this is not a car that you would feel very unhappy about at all. You know, whereas if you got one of those other cars as your company car, you might be like, oh, okay, well, you know, when it does do the job. When do I get job. my SUV? Yeah, exactly. But, when do I get the upgrade? But in this one, you'd be like, this is really nice. Yeah. You know, it's not an issue. Nice stereo as well, Bluetooth stuff. A lot of safety care in this car. It's got that auto braking thing as well that it does. 
handles reasonably for a big front wheel drive car. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I wouldn't say it's sporty. I mean, the steering is uh, accurate, but I wouldn't say that it's keen or uh, thrilling particularly. But nothing in this segment is. But nothing is. But it is, uh, it is very competent and it gets the job done. And, you know, it's a car that you can cruise back and forth between cities and towns and around town very easily, very comfortably. If I was doing Abu Dhabi run, I get a four cylinder version of one of these. Yeah, that's all you would with need. With all the toys. That's all you need. Radar crews and the like. Because to be honest, you don't actually even need this 3.6. The 2.4 in this sort of car would be absolutely fine. And again, we're on a pretty hot day. It's 36 degrees, bordering on 37. AC is keeping it pretty cool, fully automatic. It's fine. Yeah, no, so overall, uh, like I said, good. Uh, brakes, they take a little bit of biting. I found that sometimes uh, there's a bit of creep in traffic, so they, they need a little bit more biting. But, you know, aside from that, really I cannot fault the driving experience at all. So overall, I've really enjoyed having this car. I really like it. I think it's another great entry in the segment and definitely one to put on the shortlist. I think they should put a Hellcat motor in. <laughs> Why not? Hellcat all the things. I think that would test the uh, front wheel drive a little bit, wouldn't it? Uh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> So thanks very Hellcat much for watching. Car, 2019. <laughs> what are they going to call that? They, they, call, they call it the 200 the horse. The road cat. The, two, the 200 horse. <laughs> Effectively. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Please follow us, Murdering Middle East. Just look for us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're also on, of course, YouTube. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please do subscribe and tell all your friends. Thanks for watching. Until the next one.